Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Early in the morning, just as day is dawning, he picks up all the post bags in his van. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Everybody knows his bright red van. All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them. Maybe you can never be sure there'll be knock, ring, letters through your door. <laughs> postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. It was a windy day in Greendale. Hang on, Jess. It's a difficult job driving in this wind. Help! I can't see! Alf Thompson was nearly blown off his feet. Look out! <laughs> hmm. How are we going to get past this lot? said Pat. Oh, hello, Jess. Hello, Pat. It was Peter Fogg on the other side. Hey, this wretched wind, he said. Blowing trees down all over the place. Don't worry, Pat. I'll soon shift it. I'll nip down the forestry place and borrow their machine. No wonder it blew over. It's rotten. Peter was soon back with the log lifter and a power saw. Now then, we'll soon cut our way through. Stand back, these things don't half go. I'll just get these branches out of the way, Peter. Now then, let's see if we can move the pieces. Phew, it's warm work.
Hmm, should be able to get through there, said Pat. Then went for his van. But it had gone. Oh! Where could it be? There it was, safe and sound. It was just along the road, next to Sam's mobile shop. I moved your van down the road, said Sam. I could see your new paint was going to get scratched with all these branches flying about. Thanks, said Pat. It is smart, isn't it? Royal crown and all. Cheerio, Sam. Cheerio! Thanks, Peter. Cheerio! We'll have to get a move on now, Jess. Now what? Ouch! My hat! Come here. Oh, no. I'll never catch it now. It's that cable again. I'll soon fix that. There was nobody about at the village school. Have they all been blown away? The children were out enjoying the wind. But the wind wanted to deliver the letters. in all directions. The children helped to find them. One letter was stuck in a tree. Careful. It would be an airmail letter. What a day. Hold them tightly. I think they're all air letters today. Bill Thompson took them to the headmaster. And Pat waved goodbye.
cat was blown about the valley all morning with his letters and parcels. It was almost the end of his windy round when he saw a flying towel. It was one of Granny Dryden's. He went to help her catch her washing. Oh, Pat, she said, this wind's terrible. You are a dear. I'd never have caught it all by myself. Look, there's more over there. Now we've got my washing, what about your hat? It blew off miles away and sailed down a stream. Good gracious, said Granny Dryden. Ted Glenn said he'd hooked a postman's hat out of the lake. I didn't see how it could be yours. Look, he popped it on the old scarecrow to dry. It looks like mine. It is mine. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Scarecrow. Time to blow home, said Pat. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Lovely weather for people on holiday, said Pat. Every summer lots of visitors came to Greendale to walk in the hills and camp in the valley. They were talking about the visitors when Pat arrived to collect the day's post. Morning, Mrs. Goggins. Fine day. Morning, Pat. Yes, and a busy one too. Plenty of post for the visitors. 
The Jacksons are staying up at Burkhow Cottage. There are some letters for them, so don't forget the extra call, will you, Pat? Oh, yes, and there's a registered letter for those campers up at Southland's farm. They'll have to sign for that. I do hope you catch them in. And a parcel for Granny Dryden. I wonder what that can be. <laughs> it's a busy time with all these people on holiday, said Pat. I'll be glad when it's my holiday. Have a good day, Pat. I will. Cheerio. Morning, Miss Hubbard. Morning, Pat. At Burkhow Cottage, the Jacksons were away, but someone had left the gate open. And something unfortunate happened. <coughs> By the time Peter Fogg found the sheep, it was too late. When Pat arrived with the letters, he saw the sheep in the garden and decided to help. He'd chased sheep before. said Peter. I don't know what Mr. Jackson will say. It isn't your fault, said Pat. People should close gates properly. I bet they won't do that again. No. Anyway, thanks for helping. Cheerio. The next stop was at Granny Dryden's cottage. She was so pleased to see her parcel, she opened it there and then. It was her new catalogue from Manchester. It was full of pictures of things to buy. Is there anything you'd like to order? Let's have a look. Ah. He chose a digital watch with a musical alarm. That's a funny watch. It doesn't look like a watch at all to me. Oh, it's a good one. It's a good one. It doesn't even need winding. It'll help to keep me on time. Goodbye. Pat was on his way.
He had to go up the hill to Intake Farm with a letter for George Lancaster. George didn't often get letters, so he was very pleased to see this one. Um, you'll be passing the campers, won't you? said George. Could you take them some eggs? Yes, that's all right. I've got a letter for them, so I'll have to stop there anyway. George went for the eggs. What beauties, said Pat. I must take care not to drop them, especially if they're all in one basket. Cheerio! Hello? Anyone at home? That's a nuisance. They must have gone off for a walk. Well, I can tuck the eggs under here. They'll be all right. But what about this registered letter? I can't leave that. It looks too valuable. And they'll have to sign for it. I wonder if Miss Hubbard knows where they've gone. Miss Hubbard's cottage was just across the field, so Pat walked over to see if she was at home. He was lucky. She'd just cycled back from the village. Pat told her about the special letter. She knew where the campers were, all right. They've gone off to see the Gategill waterfalls, she said. They asked me the way this morning. Oh, dear. That's at least six miles, and my van can't go along that old track. I'll borrow a tractor from the farm, said Miss Hubbard. Uh, I can't drive a tractor. Don't worry, I can. And off she went for the tractor. Pat wasn't sure that he wanted to ride on a tractor, but there was no other way. So he climbed on and off they went. It was a very exciting ride, and a rough one in places. Hold on tight. Oh, that hurts. Oh, heck. Oh! Oh, hey, up! Careful! Only two more miles to go. Oh, thank goodness for that. Pat was glad when they stopped. But when he climbed down, he was almost too stiff and sore to take the letter to the campers. And then they had to go all the way back again. Pat was glad when at last he got back to his van. But what was Jess looking at in the back? It was one of George Lancaster's hens. It had got in somehow and laid an egg. She'll have to stay there until tomorrow, said Pat. But the egg, <laughs> the egg will do nicely for my tea.
Pat was on his way home when he spotted a sheep stuck in a fence. So he stopped to let it out. I think that's my last job for today, he said. And off he went. He waved as he passed the Thompsons. They were still hard at work haymaking. Goodbye, Pat. See you tomorrow. <laughs> Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. It was a cloudy morning in Greendale, but as Pat set out along the valley on his way to the village post office, it brightened up. A large van was parked in the narrow road. It was Sam's mobile shop. It was going to be a tight squeeze getting past. Come on, straighten up. Come on, you could get a bus through there. Plenty of room. Hello, Sam. Thanks. Could you, uh, could you give these to Mrs. Atkinson, please? Right, old Pat. Mind how you go. Oh, dear. I think we're stuck. It's all that rain. It's made the ground boggy. Pat, still here? Yes, I am. I'm, I'm stuck in the mud. I'll give Pete Fogg a shout as I go past. He can tow you out with his tractor. Hang on. Thanks, Sam. Ah, uh, well. Looking at life through a farmer's eyes. Always aware of the changing skies The wind and the rain, they all make their claim As he plows and he sows and sets seeds into rows He sees all the wonders that nature can bring As he works all the year to bring rich harvests in Always a 
aware of the changing skies Hedgerows with birds, wild animals and trees In the bright summer sun he sees busy honeybees And he's working with nature as all round the farm He'll try to make sure good things come to no harm Summer and winter, seasons all through There's never a time when there's nothing to do Setting the crops and preparing the land He always can do with a good helping hand Looking at life through a farmer's eyes Always aware of the changing skies He works between forests and valleys and hills For the flat even plains with an unbroken view But wherever it is, still the farmers can claim That they work for our bread with their harvests of grain Wherever it is, the farmers can claim that they work for our bread with their harvests of rain. Peter came at last. Hello, Peter. Can you tow me out, please? <laughs> My van's stuck in the mud. Easy! Sam said you'd need help. Uh, I'll just back up. Now then, uh, just tie it on there. Right. All right. Ready? Bye. Thanks a lot. Pat was on his way again. Morning. Morning, Pat. You're a bit late today. Yes. I got held up down by Atkinson's. I was trying to get past Sam's van, and I got stuck on the grass verge. Then I had to wait for Peter Fogg to come and pull me out with his tractor. Oh, a good thing he did. Look, Major Forbes' bull. It won first prize at the county show. Isn't it a magnificent animal? Have you seen it? <laughs> no, and I don't think I want to either. There's a letter for the Major, so you might meet the bull. Better keep a sharp lookout. I'd run a mile if I saw it. Cheerio. Ted Glenn was waving to Pat to make him stop. Some fool's left a gate open. I bet it's those campers. The sheep have got into the clover field. It'll kill them if they eat too much. Uh, can you give me a hand to drive them back? Yes, of course I will. I used to work on a farm when I was a lad. Have they gone far, then? 
You can see them up there. They've spread out a bit. We'd better get after them. Hang on, Pat. <laughs> We've left a gate open now. We're as bad as the campers. I'll shut it. Uh, you go that way, and I'll go this. Right. was warm work. What's that funny noise? Hey up, it's that bull. Run! Oh! Oh! Hey, wait for me! What's up, Ted? Oh, it's my ankle. Oh! By gum, it does hurt. Ouch! I can't get up. I think I've broken it. Now what are we going to do? You can't sit here till it gets better. I'd better go and get Dr. Gilbertson from the village. Won't be long. Pat gave Dr. Gilbertson her letters and told her about Ted's broken ankle. Oh dear, my car's in Pencaster being serviced, said the doctor. Then I'll take you in my van. So Dr. Gilbertson brought her bag. She sat in Jessie's place. Ted was glad to see the doctor. Oh! Ooh! Ouch! She soon bandaged his ankle up. It wasn't broken, just badly sprained. Try not to put too much weight on it now. Pat's walking stick came in handy. Thanks, Pat. Oh, eee, by gum. You'll have to ride amongst the letters, Ted. Easy now. Oh, oh dear. Jess rode on Dr. Gilbertson's knee until they arrived back at the surgery. Bye, Pat. Ted was glad to get home. You all right now? I'll manage. Thanks for helping. Cheerio. Bye. Pat was on his way again. He still had a lot of letters and parcels to deliver. Hello, Alf. Hello, Pat. 
Uh, thanks for getting the sheep back. It's the same thing every year. Gates left open all over the place. We'll have to have words with them campers, won't we, Dot? What a morning, Jess. Rounding up sheep, dodging bulls, fetching doctors. And now we're late with all this post. We'll have to get a move on this afternoon. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. One sunny morning, Pat was hurrying along the road with a van full of letters and parcels for the people of Greendale. Suddenly, he had to stop. <laughs> it was Alf Thompson driving his sheep across the road. Don't worry, Jess. They won't eat you. The sheep went into a field, and Pat was on his way again. stop was at the village school. Where is everybody? The children were bringing things to school for a display. Charlie Pringle had a bunch of flowers. Lucy Selby had brought a basket of eggs. My, your hens have been busy. And Tom Pottage had some day-old chicks. Hey, mind how you go. Whilst looking at all these things, Pat had forgotten his letters. But Bill Thompson came along with a cup of tea. Thank you, said Pat. And Bill took the letters. Sarah Gilbertson came for his cup. Have you done, she said. Nearly. Thanks, Sarah. That was grand. Goodbye. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat 
and his black and white cat. Early in the morning, just as day is dawning, he picks up all the post bags in his van. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Everybody knows his bright red van. All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them. Maybe you can never be sure there'll be knock, ring, letters through your door. <laughs> postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat was getting on well with his round. He locked his van and as it was a nice day for a picnic, he took his sandwiches to a field on the hill above Thompson Ground. Eee! It's been an easy day today. so warm that Pat soon fell asleep. But Mrs. Thompson's hens were wide awake and Pat had left his sandwich box open with his keys neatly beside it. noise woke Pat just in time to chase after his sandwiches and then he turned round in time to see a cheeky hen stealing his keys I must get my keys back. I can't open the van or deliver my letters without them. Oh, so that's where you've got to. Oh dear, it's a long time since I climbed a tree, but here goes. was just reaching out when the hen dropped the keys and flew off. Now the keys were stuck in the tree, and as Pat was climbing towards them, the branch gave way and... Oh! Oh! Right in the middle of a prickly bush. Ouch! Mrs. Thompson had heard the commotion and came to see what was going on. Pat told her about the thieving hen. Deary me, said Mrs. Thompson, the little devil. She must think she's a magpie or some such. We'd better get a ladder and see if we can reach your keys. There'll be no more posts today unless we can, said Pat. That won't do, said Mrs. Thompson, especially when I'm expecting a letter from Auntie Jean to say whether she's coming for Easter or not. So they went for the ladder. Mm -hmm. 
I'll take it now. They're here, all right. Look, I've got them. There's something else up here. Lots of things. It's like a magpie's nest. My. He brought everything down to show Mrs. Thompson. There were all kinds of shiny things. There's my wedding ring that went missing last Easter. I thought I'd lost it down the sink. That's all right. Uh, I'll get it down. Mind your head. As my hens have stolen your sandwiches, you'd better come and have some dinner with me. There's plenty to spare. That's very nice of you. Pat was glad he lost his sandwiches when he saw what a good dinner Mrs. Thompson had cooked. Mrs. Thompson was glad too. She'd got her ring back. But it was soon time to be off. Thanks for the meal. It was lovely. Come on, Jess. Jess. Come on. Just fancy, said Pat. A magpie hen. <laughs> Who ever heard of such a thing? stopped to tell Sam Waldron about the magpie hen. It had better keep away from my van, he said. I wonder if that's where my tie pin went. Sounds odd. Oh, it just needs a clean. When Pat saw Miss Hubbard, he told her about the magpie hen. Well, I lost a silver earring last month, she said. And a hat pin. I wonder if they're up a tree somewhere. I must go and see Mrs. Thompson. On the way home, Pat met Alf Thompson on his tractor and stopped to tell him about the magpie hen. Alf couldn't think of anything he lost, but he thought it was a good story. Pat had a letter for him. Ooh, one for me. I'll not lose this anyway. Cheerio. Bye. Pat saw some real magpies on the way home and wondered if they had taught Mrs. Thompson's hens to steal. As for Jess, he was asleep. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, 
postman Pat and his black and white cat. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Early in the morning, just as day is dawning, he picks up all the post bags in his van. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Everybody knows his bright red van. All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them. Maybe you can never be sure there'll be knock, ring, letters through your door. <laughs> postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. It was another hot day in Greendale, a very hot day. Everything was drying up. It's a real scorcher today, said Pat to Jess as they drove along. Phew, I'm thirsty already. Mrs. Goggins was trying to get cool outside the post office. Morning, Pat. Isn't it hot? And we're going to be without water today. I know, said Pat. The lake's really low. They're going to turn the water off this morning. Whatever will we do? <laughs> but they can't turn off the lemonade. Here, have a drink, Pat, before you go. Ah, just what I need. Mm. My, that's good. Mm. Mm. <sighs> that's much better. Thank you. Well, I'll be off then. Hey, don't forget Granny Dryden's parcel. It looks like something special. I won't. And thanks for the drink. Cheerio. Pat put the parcel in the van to deliver later on. He started his round with the village letters. He met Granny Dryden out shopping and told her about the water being cut off. Well. It's a pity the old pump's not working, she said. There were plenty of dry times in my young days, and do you know, it never dried up, not once. I wonder, said Pat. <laughs> ah! 
I wonder if Ted Glenn could mend it. I must ask him. He can fix just about anything. Morning, Pat. Morning, Mrs. Pottage. Let's see, uh, I think I have something for you today. Oh, thank you. Right, Jess, that's the village done. Now for the farms. The water was already off at Greendale Farm. Peter Fogg was drawing water for the cows from the old well. Hello, Tom. <laughs> Helping out. Hello, Pat. <laughs> Warm work, this. Still got water in the old well. Let's have a look. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Now you've done it. I wonder if I can fish it out with this hook. Ah, got it. It'll be nice and cool anyway. At least I didn't drop this down the well. It's for you. Oh, thanks. Could you drop this can of water off at George Lancaster's place? There'll be no water up there. Sure, we'll be going past there, won't we, Jess? Cheerio! Hello, Pat. Isn't this drought terrible? We haven't got a drop of water left. Don't worry, if you look in the back, I've brought you a can from Peter Fogg. He said you'd be short. Thanks, Pat. That's grand. Cheerio! Pat remembered to call at Ted Glenn's workshop to ask if he could mend the old village pump. Hello, Ted. Anyone at home? Ah, there you are. Pat asked him about the pump. What, that old pump in the village? Well, I don't know. It's worth a try. I'll get me tools. Leave it with me. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. Dee, 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 dee. Boom, 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 boom. Mrs. Thompson was enjoying a cup of tea. Pat called with a letter. Hello, Mrs. Thompson. How are you getting on? Are you out of water like everyone else? Oh, no. Our spring's still flowing. Ah, very nice, too. I wonder how Ted's getting on. There's a handyman called Ted Glenn And he's working once again can just about fix anything you'll 
ever need to mend Maybe a tractor or a ladder Or a broken frying pan Just go down and see him And he'll help you if he can He'll just say, leave it with me Leave it with me I'll try to fix that up for you As quickly as can be He'll just say, leave it with me to fix that up for you as quickly as can be All the valley knows that he's the best of handy men They all say if you want things mended go and see Ted Glenn A broken clock or a horseshoe or an engine in a van Just go down and see him and he'll help you if he can He'll just say leave it with me I'll try to fix that up for you as quickly as can be. He'll just say, leave it with me, leave it with me. I'll try to fix that up for you as quickly as can be. He'll just say, leave it with me, leave it with me. I'll try to fix that up for you as quickly as can be. Granny Dryden was watching out for Pat. He brought her a can of water as well as a parcel. Um, remember what you said about the old pump? Well, Ted's mended it. It's going a treat. When she opened the parcel, she discovered it was Pat's new digital watch, which she had ordered for him from Manchester. Pat was very pleased with it. I'll always be on time now, he said. Thank you for getting it for me. Uh, I'll bring the money tomorrow. Look after yourself. Goodbye. Pat had kept a can of water for himself, too. Jess kept a sharp eye on it. <laughs> he didn't want another wetting, no matter how hot it was. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Oh, 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 oh. 